Belonging to the Pisidae family, red-bellied woodpeckers are common in eastern woodlands, such as old stands of oak and hickory to young hardwoods and pines. But it has also adjusted very well to living in suburbs and city parks. They have a sleek look with a rounded head and are roughly the same size as a hairy woodpecker and three quarters the size of a northern flicker. Both sexes measure around nine and a half inches in length and weigh two to three ounces. They have thick black straight bills as well as dark gray legs and feet. This medium sized woodpecker was given a pretty confusing name. Since having the name red bellied, one would expect to see a striking red color on the stomach or at least fairly noticeable. It's barely red or visible, so much so that you'd be forgiven for saying that they don't even have a red belly. However, to the trained eye and experienced birders, as well as when viewed at the right angle, the slight blushy hue on their abdomen is revealed. So the naming isn't totally incorrect after all. When trying to identify this bird, it's probably better to note the zebra-like black and white pattern on their back instead of looking for their faint reddish belly. One other obvious feature is their flashy red head and nape, a detail that caused some people to refer to them as red-headed woodpecker, which actually can't be used due to a somewhat rarer species already owning that name. When discerning between female and male red-bellied woodpeckers, only the males have a bright red cap from their forehead to the base of their neck. Females have red only on their neck. For the most part, they are birds of the southeast, and according to Audubon, in the first half of the 20th century, this species was declining in some northern areas. Currently, though, that's not the case anymore. They are even expanding their range to the north, reaching as far as some southern locations of eastern Canada where they are more rare. It is thought that backyard feeders could be what has helped them grow further north. Overall, their number seems stable. Partners in Flight estimates the breeding population at 10 million. The species seems to be doing very well, and for this, they rate an 8 out of 20 on the Continental Concern score. The oldest known red-bellied woodpecker was a male in Georgia and at least 12 years, 3 months old when it was identified in the wild by his band. Pretty cool. Red-bellied woodpeckers are resident birds and are not truly migratory, wintering throughout their range. Some individuals may wander north in fall and remain through winter, though. Most of their diet consists of insects, spiders, and other arthropods. Nevertheless, it consumes a lot of plant food too, as much as 50% or more at some seasons. This can include pine cones and acorns. In fall and winter, they will also eat fruit, such as grapes and hackberries. In fact, they have the reputation of eating more fruits and berries than other woodpeckers. They also sometimes consume eggs of small birds and oozing sap. Due to them living in suburbs and the fact that they do eat nuts and seeds, it is possible to attract them to backyards just by providing feeders that have peanuts and sunflower seeds. Over winter, providing suet is especially effective at drying them in. More rarely, red-bellied woodpeckers have been spotted drinking nectar from hummingbird feeders. Having these guys visit adds some bright color and sometimes entertaining action. For those who prefer the more natural route to attracting birds to their backyard, try leaving dead trees if possible, as this may encourage the birds to forage naturally or even nest in your yard. If there are berry trees like mountain ash or hawthorn in your garden, this may bring them in fall and winter to forage. A pretty neat thing about this woodpecker is that they can stick their tongue out nearly two inches past the end of the beak. Also, the tip of their tongue is barbed, that, along with their sticky saliva, a feature common in woodpeckers, allows them to easily grab prey deep in crevices or seeds from a feeder. Interestingly, males have longer, wider-tipped tongues than females. This may be to allow a breeding pair to forage in slightly different places on their territory and maximize their use of available food. Just as with nuthatches, it's possible sometimes to see a red-bellied woodpecker wedging large nuts into bark crevices to hold it in place as they use their beak to chip away at the nut into manageable pieces. In fall, these cracks in trees may be used to store food like seeds and nuts for later in the year when there is a shortage. This is a habit it shares with other woodpeckers in its genus. 
These birds do not mate for life like some others, such as blue jays. They are thought to be monogamous, though, becoming a pair in late winter and remaining together throughout the nesting season, but finding a new mate the next year. Red-bellied woodpeckers choose a nest site typically in dead wood, such as dying trees or rotting fence posts, usually less than 50 feet above ground. However, sometimes it can be as high as 120 feet. An abandoned hole of other woodpeckers or a natural cavity may be used as well, and sometimes even a nest box. Although I do not have these memorable woodpeckers, Terry's videos gave me a little glimpse into them. Definitely an eye-catching character to have visiting. I enjoyed learning about them as I did some research, especially about them expanding their range northward. I hope to see one someday in my area. I have always wondered why they were called red-bellied woodpecker, though because any time I saw pictures, there was no obvious red belly. And I never for whatever reason took an interest to find out what that was all about. So it was nice to learn that they do actually have a reddish hue on their stomach. It's just faint, that's all. In fact, barely visible in the field. It's pretty odd how they were given that name, especially since their head is much more striking in color. But I suppose since there is already a woodpecker called the red-headed, it can't be used. There is another very prominent feature they possess, though their zebra-like black and white pattern on their back. So maybe zebra back woodpecker could have been a more fitting name. Well, that's my thoughts, but I'd like to read some of yours. Is there any other name you can think of that would make more sense for this lovely woodpecker? Comment below and let me know. And also, don't forget to check out Terry's channel. Thanks a lot. Take care. Happy birding.